to get ready to start. Uh, if you could all please rise for reading the scripture. And blessings to you at home, wherever you are joining us. We'll be reading from Kehele 91. He who dwells in the shelter of Elion will abide in the shadows of Shaddai. I will say of Adonai, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will rescue me from the hunter's trap. And from the deadly pestilence, he will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness is body armor and shield. You will not fear the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by the day. Good Shabbos. Matthew 24, 30 through 31. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they will gather together his chosen people from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech Asher kirishanu b'metzvotzav v'tzivanu lishma ko shofar. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with His commandments and commands us to hear the call of the shofar. Amen. Amen. Children sought him, the lepers he touched and made clean, 
how the despised and outcast found love and release from their sins, how the hypocrites feared him whose words uncovered their sins, despised and rejected, acquainted with grief, he bore the sins of Israel. All we like sheep have gone astray, turned every one to his own way. Our iniquities were laid upon the king, the sins of the world his burden to bear. He rose from the dead and opened the way to life everlasting. Praise his name. We are in him. His spirit empowers. New life is ours with joy and peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, who has given us Messiah Yeshua, our King.
doing wonders, oh Lord, who is like thee, O oh Lord? Quien es como tu, Señor, entre los dioses? Quien es como tu, en gloria y majestad? Eres grande en poder, haces maravillas, quien es como tu Señor. Who is comparable to you, O King? 
who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprout. And you are faithful to bring back life to the dead. Blessed are you, O Lord, who revives the dead. Kadosh Hashem, holiness of God's name. You are holy, and your name is holy. And holy ones praise you every day forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the holy God. And please join me for Hoju. Hoju Adonai Tov Ki Le'olam Hatom Hoju Adonai Tov Ki Le'olam Hatom
is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he made us unlike the nations of the land, and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He has not made our portion like theirs, and our lot like all their multitudes. And we bend the knee and bow, and acknowledge our thanks before the King over kings, the Holy One. Blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation. The seat of his glory is in the heavens above, the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He is our God.
came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moshe would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from you. Torah will go forth out of Sion in the Lord's word from Jerusalem. <coughs> Blessed is he who in his holiness gave Torah to his people Israel. <coughs> Sowing time. You will eat your bread to the full, 
and live securely in your land. I will bring shalom in the land and you will lie down with no one making you afraid. I will remove dangerous beasts from your land and no sword will pass through your land. You will chase your enemies and they will fall before you by the sword. Five of you will chase a hundred and a hundred of you will chase 10,000 and your enemies will fall by the sword before you. I will turn towards you, make you fruitful and multiply you and I will confirm my covenant with you. You will eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new. I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul will not abhor you. I will walk among you and will be your God and you will be my people. I am Adonai your God who brought you forth out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves. I have broken the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright. But if you will not listen to me, not carry out all these mitzvot, and if you reject my statutes, and if your soul abhors my ordinances, so that you do not keep all my mitzvot, but instead break my covenant, then I will do the following to you in return. I will appoint terror over you, wasting disease and fever that will dim the eyes and cause the soul to pine away. You will sow your seed in vain because your enemies will eat it. I will set my face against you and you will be routed before your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you and you will flee when no one pursues you. If you, in spite of these things, will not listen to me, then I will chastise you seven times more for your sins. I will break your pride of power. I will make your sky like iron and your earth like bronze and your strength will be spent in vain. For your land will not yield its increase, nor will the trees of your land yield their fruit. If you keep walking contrary to me and will not listen to me, then I will multiply the plagues on you seven times like your sins. I will send the wild animals among you, which will rob you of your children, destroy your livestock, and make you so few in number that your roads will become deserted. Now if in spite of these things you will not be chastened by me, but walk contrary to me instead, then I will also walk contrary to you. Then I will strike you, I myself, seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword upon you that will execute the vengeance of the covenant, and you will be gathered together inside your cities. I will send the pestilence among you, and you will be given into the hand of your enemies. When I break your staff of bread, ten women will break, bake your bread in one oven, and they will bring back your bread by weight so that you will eat but not be satisfied. Yet in spite of this, you will not listen to me. If you will not listen to me, but walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you in wrath. So I will chastise you seven times for your sin. You will eat the flesh of your sons and you will eat the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places and cut down your altars of incense. Cast your dead bodies upon the bodies of your idols. My soul will pour you. I will lay waste your cities and devastate your sanctuaries. I will not smell your soothing aromas. I will make the land desolate and your enemies settling there will be astonished at it. I will scatter you among the nations and I will draw out the sword after you. So your land will become a desolation and your cities will become a waste. Then the land will enjoy its Shabbats, all the days of its desolation. While you are in the land of your enemies, then the land will rest and enjoy its Shabbat. As long as it lies desolate, it will have rest, the rest which it did not have from your Shabbat when you lived on it. As for those who remain, I will bring weakness in their hearts in the land of their enemies, so that the sound of a driven leaf will put them to flight, and they will flee as one flees from the sword and fall even when no one is pursuing. They will stumble over one another as if before the sword when no one pursues and you will have no strength to stand before your enemies. You will perish among the nations and the land of your enemies will devour you. Those of you who are left in the land of your enemies will rot away because of their iniquity and because of the iniquities of their fathers, they will rot away with them. But if they confess their iniquity and that of their fathers, and the treachery they committed against me, and how they walked contrary to me. In return, I walked contrary to them and brought them into the land of their enemies. And if at that time their uncircumcised heart becomes humble, 
so that they accept the punishment of their iniquity. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and my covenant with Abraham. In this week's Parsha, Hashem continuously tells the people what good will come from their obedience to Him. He not only promises that they will have enough to eat and drink, but goes as far as promising that they don't even have to worry about being attacked by a wild animal. He promises to walk among them and be their God and King for as long as they uphold their half of the covenant. However, He also warns of the curses that come with breaking our covenant with Him, to the point where Israel is scattered and so few in number that they almost cease to exist. And although in his righteous eyes, Israel deserves to be utterly destroyed, our God is faithful. And through one man's obedience, Abraham's obedience, Hashem saved Israel. And to this day, thousands of generations are saved because Abraham was obedient. Hashem's covenant with Abraham has saved our people time and time again. This, in a small scale, shines light on the covenant we have with Yeshua. Although we aren't perfect, he time and time again upholds his end of our covenant with him because he promised to never leave our side. He's promised to shepherd us and to leave the flock to save us. All of us here today are capable of having the faith and obedience of Abraham. These promises belong to us and no one can snatch us from his hands. So my prayer for Beck is that we all are able to take hold of these promises, to be more obedient, to not let doubt or fear rob us of what Yeshua is willing to give us, and that together we are strengthened. It is traditional among our people at the end of a book of the Torah, uh, we together proclaim Hazak Hazak Benit Hazek, which uh, translates to be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. Um, and I pray that through Leviticus, we were all strengthened together. So together, Hazak Hazak Benit Hazek. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. Again. Hazak Hazak Benit Hazek. Be strong, be strong, and let us be strengthened. As we lift up the Torah for all to see what was just proclaimed, we point to the scroll with our little finger. This demonstrates that we are little in the presence of Hashem, and His word is what we submit to.
prophets of truth and righteousness. Today's Torah reading is Jeremiah 16, verse uh, 19 through chapter 17, verse 14. <coughs> As on I am my strength, my stronghold, my refuge in the day of affliction, to you will the nations come from the ends of the earth and say, Our fathers have inherited nothing but lies, utility, and useless things. When man make gods for himself, yet they are not gods. So I will surely make them know, this time I make them know, my hand and my might. They will know that my name is Adonai. Judah's sin is written with an iron pen and with the point of a diamond, engraved on the tablet of their heart and on the horns of your altars. So their children remember their altars and their asherah poles by leafy trees on the high hills. My mountain and the country, your wealth and all your treasures, I will give away as plunder, along with your high places for sin within all your borders. So you on your own let go of your heritage that I gave you. So I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For you have kindled a fire in my nose that will, in my nose that will burn forever. Thus says Adonai, Cursed is the one who trusts in man and depends on flesh as his arm, and whose heart turns from Adonai. For he will be like a bush in the desert. He cannot see goodness when it comes, but will dwell in parched places in the wilderness, a salt land where no one lives. Blessed is the one who trusts in Adonai, whose confidence is in Adonai. For he will be like a tree planted by the waters, spreading out its root by a stream. It has no fear when heat comes, but its leaves will be green. But its leaves will be green. It does not worry in a year of drought, it will depart from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and incurable. Who can know it? I, I am Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. The reading today from the Besor portion is, there's two readings. First, we're going to read Luke 4, 14-22. Yeshua returned in the power of the Ruach to the Galilee, and news about him went out through all the surrounding region. He taught in their synagogues, and everyone was praising him. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been raised. As was his custom, he went into the synagogue on Shabbat, and he got up to read. When the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The Ruach Adonai is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, 
to set free the oppressed and to proclaim the year of Adonai's favor. He closed the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. All eyes in the synagogue were focused on him. Then he began to tell them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your ears. All were speaking well of him and marveling at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. And they were saying, Isn't this the son of Joseph?
offer blessings and thanksgiving at this time and forever. Blessed are you, O Lord God, King, exalted through praises, God of thanksgiving, master of wonders, who chooses musical songs of praise, King, God, giver of life to the world. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom. I hope you have a blessed meal today, everybody.
Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm glad that you all came out today. May Hashem greatly bless you and keep you, each and every one of you. May you continue to dwell in the shadow of the Most High for all the days of your life. That being said, let's go ahead and get into today's message. Amen? Amen. This week was a double portion. We had Bahar, which is on the mountain, and we had Bet Chotai, which is in my ways or in my statues. I'd like thanks to Anna for giving a wonderful insight to that during her portion. May God bless her for her obedience to that. That being said, this week at the end of the Torah portion, it goes all the way through these statues and everything else, and yet Hashem returns. At the very end, it returns to Mount Sinai. Why does it continue? Why did it go through all that and return to Mount Sinai? Mount Sinai. When Abram made his covenant with Hashem, where was that? It was there, right? When Moshe received not just the second tablet, but the first tablet, where was it? Mount Sinai. So everything Hashem gives it to us from his high places. Understand that everything God gives you is from his high places. Everything that is good for you, everything that is cross for you. And sometimes when we get too far away, we have to return to his high places. That way we can get back to what our design is, back to his covenant, back to our relationship. And stop wandering around as if we have no home or no home. We get back to where he has called us from. command was from there. When Yeshua wanted to go and speak with the Father, wanted to go pray, where did he go? He went up to the mount. He went up to the high place to go seek Hashem. To go speak with Hashem. That means for you and I, it's not necessarily that we should run to Enchanted Rock. Being that we don't live near Mount Sinai. But that we, inside of ourselves, should seek Him from the high places. Yes. 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 Amen. Right? Yeah, that we yeah. should dig in and reach out to our God. Because He is there. And He is faithful. So, according to Rashi, He says for us to dig into the, the insights in the Torah. Dig into the Word. Because there... When we're digging in, we're being elevated. <clears throat> One of the examples that's given to prove that it is not something that is just for back then. There's a blessing that we do whenever we wash our hands or wash our face. And I do this every single morning without fail. It's a netilat yadaim. And it, it is the, the blessing of when I wash my face in the morning, when I wash my hands in the morning, every single morning, every single morning. It's not, I'm not saying this to say, oh, but I'm saying this because this principle that has been since Moshe, this principle, when we come around to 2020, we have the COVID going on. What is the first thing they tell you? Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Yes. Right? Wash your hands, wash your face. That way you don't get it. Wash yourself daily. This isn't something that's new. Right? It prevented our people from the plagues. Because we wash. We 
follow Hashem's instruction, which is a long time ago. Everything that He has given has been for our benefit. Everything. From the most minute detail. And it only takes 20 seconds. Sorry, what? Don't be that guy. <laughs> Akiva was teaching, and one of the students raised his hand and said, Rabbi, Every single 
single day they get up and rise up for the kingdom. They get up, they rise up, they express the love of God to people that they meet. Whether they like them or they don't. Whether they're trying to steal sisters, female uh, locals or not. They still rise up every single day. Take the example. Moshe says for us to look to the example of the elders and have an attentive ear to what they say. So listen to those who have went before you. Those who are a little further on the journey than you.
you a question. But how many do even to this day? We receive a blessing that we have no explanation of. And I've heard people say, wait, am I supposed to have this? I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like this is wrong. I shouldn't have this. Good friend of yours gets sick and spends months and months in sickness. You catch the same thing or in, or, and are healed in six days. I, I, I don't know. I shouldn't have this. to recognize the hand of God. jelly donut 
You sat all day at the buffet. Whatever it is, you did it. You had no one there with a shotgun to your head talking about, you better eat that po' boy sandwich. Get 50 more just like it. Nobody made you do it. Nobody made you take out that person. Nobody made you date that person. Nobody made you, nobody made you put that thing to your lips. Nobody made you go to that place. Stop blaming everybody else. It's you. Be accountable for your actions. Rise up to your role in the kingdom. I can't do it for you. Robinson, as pretty as she may be, she cannot make you rise up to what you're supposed to do for the kingdom. That's all on you. Well, you know, I would rise up, but there's that girl in the black who holds, who's holding the canopy. I just can't be where she is. So annoying. That's true. I, I hate to say this, but she's there to help you mature and grow. And you're there to help her mature and grow. Stop finding excuses and do your part. Let me move further on. To return to Sinai is, to, is for us to openly acknowledge that there are real moments of revelation today in our lives. Just as Hashem gave the revelation to Moshe, today He gives revelation to elders, to goodbyes, to stewards, to brothers, to sisters. He gives revelation every single day. But you have to rise up. Amen? Amen. You have to rise up. Part of the great part of us returning to Sinai is for us, like Yeshua, to admit we don't have all the answers. That we too have to seek the face of God for some of the answers. Amen. Amen. We have to seek the face of God for some of the answers. We don't know it all. I'll tell you plainly, when people give me a question that I don't know, I'll say, I'll get back to you. I don't know. I have to look in scripture, see what it says. Right? And that's okay. As a man or a woman of God, you're not expected to know everything. But you are expected to seek out God for the answer. You are expected to seek out his word for the answer. Because it's there. Right? Yes. Amen. Far better, far better it be that way. Then you walk around as a fraud. <laughs> pretending you know everything when you don't. Solomon says it this way, a fool walks around with his chest puffed out as if he knows it all. But a wise man seeks counsel. Amen. Right? Yes. yes. So seek the word of God. Seek the elders. Be patient. You young people, don't grow up too quick. Okay? Take your time. It's okay not to be an adult by tomorrow, okay? Be a child for as long as you can, all right? Soak up as much knowledge as possible. In Betukai, it opens up. If you proceed in my statutes, In his, in his in his ways. 
if you walk forth in the ways of Messiah Yeshua, if, Yeshua was known to have said if 52 times throughout his passages, if, 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 how many, how many weeks in a year? 52. Ain't that something? Right? So we have to choose the way of God every single week, right? Yes. Sometimes I don't feel like it. That's okay. Choose them anyway. Right? Yes. yes. So choosing Him becomes second nature, even first nature. And the flesh becomes second nature and third nature. Right? Right. Part of our, our mission here on this earth is that we're being refined. We're in the potter's hands. We're that hewn stone. We're being refined and chiseled. Made into that product that God needs for this time, this age, for his kingdom. So accept it. Embrace it. So...
Instead of going with your human instinct to blame everyone else under the sun, try being accountable, right? Yes. Okay, I went this way. Let me look to see what lesson there is in it. Okay, this happened. Let me figure out the lesson in it. Let me continue to grow, to move forward. Let me continue to seek after his face. Even in this challenge, I will seek the lesson that God is trying to teach me. If you don't see a, a lesson, if you don't see a teachable moment, your eyes aren't looking at the right place. Understand, while your life, in part, is about you, it's not solely about you. Your life is com connected to so many other lives. What you do with your life not only matters to you, but it matters to everyone in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Because you are a branch in that kingdom. So please, stop looking for the person who called, caused all the world's problems. not at all what we're called to do. You and I are called to tikkun olam, to repair the world, to enlighten the world. The Our Father even confirms this. It says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. On earth as it is in heaven. Okay, pause there. So on earth as it is. So part of our quest is to bring that heaven to earth. Amen? Because we are preparing for the King Messiah. Yes? Yes. We are preparing for Yeshua's return. Who's not preparing for the Messiah? Oh, why are you raising your hand back there? All of us, Amen. within Judaism, within Christianity, we're preparing for the King Messiah. Amen. So prepare the way. Be that light of heaven here. Declare the goodness of heaven here. Declare it. Declare the divine word here. Amen? Amen. And may that divine word rule and reign in your life here. For on earth as it is in heaven. to a pig pen, what do you think is going to happen? You're not going to stay clean. Right? You're going to get dirty. 
You're gonna get filthy. Forget dirty, yeah. you're gonna get filthy. Yeah, right. <laughs> you might even get bit. I remember as a boy, my our father sold insurance to farmers. One of the things I used to love to do is just grab corn from their from their uh, grain silo, and I'll just toss it out and watch the pigs tackle each other to get the food. It's quite entertaining for me as a boy. But they will bite each other. They will If we have a plant and we're always every day trimming and doing this and doing that to it, will it produce? Will it? Or do you have to step back sometimes and let it grow? Patience. Does he zap you with patience? No. Nope. No? No. no. What does he do? Sometimes to make you patient about. You have to learn. He teaches you patience, right? Yeah. How about if you ask him for strength, what does he do? Puts you through the lesson. Right? What did he say? Oh, you want that test. Well, here you go. <laughs> right? You go through the lessons of it. Amen? Sister, how, how many lessons has God put you, you, you and Elder through? 
How many lessons has God put you and Elder through in y'all's time? <laughs> Just a couple, she said. But yet, y'all have growth. Y'all have maturity. Y'all have patience. Y'all have understanding. Y'all have compassion. Because he has grown you. Absolutely.
the field. Work it like Boaz in his field. Work it like Ruth in their field. Right? Y'all thought, thought Ruth didn't work. Oh, yeah, she did. Oh, yeah, she did. She was out there gleaning the crops. Yeah. Anybody who's ever done any of that knows it's, it's work. Remember our grandfather used to tell stories about picking cotton. Yep. About gleaning the cotton field. I always wondered about it, then I got a taste to do it myself. And as I tell you, it, it was it was a long day. I had to get over myself quick while I was out there doing it. But that's the only way you get to where God has for you. Is got by getting over yourself. Amen? Amen. I apologize if I'm taking long. This was a double portion. Actually, you'll be fine. <laughs> so, at the conclusion, we return to Zion. All the wondering and all the growth or, or grief. If we, like Yeshua, will forgive those who have wronged us, if we will let it go, if we will just take hold of God's plan and walk in His footsteps, return to His Word, and in that place of pain, put His Word. In that space in you, of that void, put his love in that, oh, appreciate it, in that space of doubt or uncertainty, put his promise, right, his promise for you is that he has fearfully and wonderfully made you. His promise for you is that you are a son and daughter of the Most High. That you are a priest of His Word. Amen? Amen. Amen. His promise for you. In that place of emptiness, His love. In the place of failure. That's where you have it wrong. God never fails. His Word never returns void. What you think was a failure is a lesson. And any lesson he will take and make for his good. Amen? Amen. Amen. I've seen the most hardened knuckleheads that were taken and used for his good. And if he can do that with them, never forget Abraham was the first one to be called Hebrew and it wasn't because he was a nice guy it's because he was a stubborn man in the right way yes <laughs> yes don't use this as, as an excuse well Abraham was stubborn so I get to be also <laughs> don't make that mistake Finally, put his promise. Every time you think of a time or you feel with an error, look for the lesson in it. Look for the lesson, look for the lesson, look for the lesson. Always seek to learn, to grow. And in the in between, Fill your days with prayer. Fill your days with worship. And never fail in your coming together. Amen? Amen. Always remember that he who seeks the face of God, no weapon formed against you shall is my
my strength and my He is my refuge and my portrait. Chavez. The blessing for the Amotzi. Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melech Amen. Amotzi Lehenu Amen. Go to the playground.
child here? There's one here? Yes, one here. Okay. Where is it? Come on, baby. There's Get up there. One over there? And there's another one over there. One over there. Oh, okay. Got two. They, they can sit in proxy for the others. Okay, if, if we can get uh, Phil, if you could come over here and open the Talit. But if you want to go up there and pull that, buddy. Uh, oh, here she, she's coming, she's coming. It, it, it. Yeah. Right up on, on the uh, end of the road from the car. Please extend your hand towards the future leaders of our faith and of our nation. <coughs> We're on the wrong side. We don't need on this side. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, OCD moment.